This week at Interior. Secretary Jewell this week announced that Interior is partnering with the AFL-CIO's Union Sportsman's Alliance, or USA, to rebuild, renew, and restore our national parks, wildlife refuges, and other public lands. The agreement pairs the USA's skilled volunteer labor force with shovel-ready projects across the country. The volunteers will work alongside Youth and Veterans Conservation Corps, creating what Secretary Jewell called a win-win. Projects have already been identified in Illinois, Ohio, Virginia, Maryland, Nevada, Texas, and Wisconsin. A new report this week shows that up to one quarter of all U.S. national parkland could be vulnerable to vegetation shifts caused by a combination of climate change and habitat loss. The report, published in Global Change Biology, shows that climate change matched with habitat loss caused by roads, urbanization, agriculture, and deforestation is putting a tremendous amount of landscape at risk. The report could help provide landscape managers with vital information as they devise adaptation strategies. You can find out more about that report at nps.gov. Deputy Secretary Mike Conner joined Robert Bonney with USDA and the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation last week to announce more than $3 million in grants to further restore the longleaf pine ecosystem, which once stretched from Virginia to Texas. Fifteen projects across eight states have been selected to receive the funding. Ultimately, some 11,800 acres will be restored and more than 116,000 acres of existing habitat will be enhanced. The grants are managed by the Longleaf Stewardship Fund, a public-private partnership supported in part by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Department of Agriculture's U.S. Forest Service, and the Department of Defense. The grand opening this week of the Pittsburgh Botanic Garden, which is near abandoned coal mines and home to an active remining site. Over the last several years, Interior's Office of Surface Mining, Reclamation and Enforcement has provided funding and technical assistance for community partners to treat some of the impacts that previous mining activities had on the water sources on site. The Secretary saluted the public-private partnership that saw the project through and will continue to work together at the 460-acre site. And after 50 years, a pair of bald eagles is nesting on San Clemente Island. Fish and wildlife officials say that discovery means that bald eagles have re-established their territories on five of the eight channel islands after vanishing from those islands in the 1960s when the insecticide DDT contaminated the local food chain. This year's overall season yielded 16 breeding pairs of eagles, with 14 eagle chicks joining the population of more than 60 eagles living throughout the islands. That's this week at Interior.